Welcome to the Oral Surgery Fight Club podcast. This is a collection of mock cases in the field of oral and maxillofacial surgery in a question and answer format conducted on Zoom. Enjoy. Cool. So we got a shotgun approach today, right? Yeah, I think so. All right. I was due to present one case. Uh, it'll probably be shorter, but it's all good. Maybe we could do like a. Uh, I, w- I was thinking sort of a group uh, review. We could sort of do like popcorn questions and answers. Uh, there's some gnarly cases here. All right. Perfect. Fuck. <laughs> So you get a, a some some aged man in your trauma bay, <laughs> like the this is the image they call you with, saying, yeah. "Hey doc, do you want to see this guy?" Um, not particularly, but I guess I'm on trauma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you say you want to see the guy. Uh, what's the first thing you do? They say, "Doc, we have no idea uh, w- what we're doing. Uh, we have a gauze wrapped around the the knife." Um, we're, we, I mean, it's not actively filling up with blood until we take the gauze off. Um, we haven't tried talking to the guy or anything. Um, so first of all, when did this happen? Um, has ATLS been completed at this point? Yeah. ATLS has been completed. So they, they have, um, I could run through ATLS, but yeah, yeah. Uh, he's stabilized. He's stabilized. He's stabilized. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, so, um, I guess what, from your, this angle, what does your physical exam look like for a patient like this? Yeah. So obviously, <laughs> um, starting from the outside in, it's a, a typical trauma exam. I know you're going to be focused on the knife, but, um, so you're checking for other lacerations or injuries. Um, I can't tell where this entry is going through. I want to know what the angulation uh, and trajectory kind of medial laterally is of this. Yeah. You see the, trajectory. you see the knife, uh, entering the left orbit. Uh, okay. and that's about, um, all you see. Um, can you describe what your ocular exam looks like? Um, so for his ocular exam, um, you want to check for, uh, intraocular pressures on the right side, if it's lateral to the globe or if it's exactly through the globe, um, Obviously, if it's through the globe, it's probably going to be non-repairable at this point, but an ophthalmology consult is very reasonable. Um, on the other side, you want to check uh, consensual re- responses and pupillary responses as, as well as acuity. and. Let, let's, say the, let's say, I understand, let's say the opposite <clears throat> side um, does not show a response. Like there, I always have so, that. Yeah, yeah. So if the opposite side does not show a response, um, there's likely a injury back at the optic chiasm um, that's preventing the the parasympathetic response to the other side. Sure. Um, let's say the the penetrating injury happened uh, to injure the globe. Um, what are the options that ophthalmology? Uh, might have at their disposal. Um, so when you're talking about treating a, a ruptured globe, I mean, if they cannot repair it primarily, <clears throat> the other options are um, a nucleation, um, oh gosh, exenteration and evisceration. <clears throat> uh, so you, um, let's say in a, in a previous patient that came in during the night, um, they did not have a uh, an object lodged through their orbital cone like this. Mm-hmm. Um, but you also subjected, you also suspected a, uh, globe injury. Uh, are there any signs or symptoms that could tip you off to a globe injury? Besides- yeah. I mean, a, a decreased intraocular pressure. So if the, if the globe's really soft, um, obviously, I mean, uh, subconjunctival hemorrhage and, and high FEMA or other, signs of orbital trauma but a soft globe would be one thing what is um what is a teardrop pupil uh a teardrop pupil would occur when 
there is oh man i forget sorry no no you had it it's, there's it's a cornea i don't know traumatic yeah. arthritis yeah when there's a penetrating injury i'm pretty sure feel free to interrupt during these these popcorn uh session guys um I, I sort of have a blueprint for how I wanted it to go, but sort of falls apart at, at some point. Yeah, anyway, so I mean, obviously this guy, you want to try to get a, a CTA to see if there are any vascular injuries before you try to remove this. Um, sure. Um, so you get a CTA, uh, remarkably nothing's injured. His carotids are fine. Uh, IMAX is fine. What would be your surgical plan here? Um, so along with ophthalmology, um, it's probably going to have to be a joint, a joint case where, cause I doubt they're gonna be able to get a good exam before this, this, uh, projectile is removed, but it'll be under general anesthesia and our plan would be for, um, repair or, uh, like I said, a nucleation or, uh, evisceration of the globe with, um, if we're eviscerating the globe, we may not need to repair the orbital floor, but, um, sure. so remarkably you pull out uh, this knife, um, there turns out there actually is no injury to the globe, um, uh, merely the, the medial rectus. Um, and the patient is just fine. Let me go to different case. Yeah. So you see, um, your next patient comes in, uh, she said three weeks ago, her husband hit her in the face. Mm -hmm. Um, you perform your exam. Uh, for extraocular movements, and you see this. Yeah, so there's obviously a limitation in upward gaze, so there's some sort of restriction in the um, inferior rectus. What is a, a wide-eyed blowout fracture? So it typically occurs in pediatric patients in which there's um, a, it's more like a trap door blowout of the orbital floor where it it gets um, depressed and then snaps back and entraps the, um, the inferior rectus. Sure. Um, assuming this lady has no past medical history, allergies or anything of the sort, uh, what would be your surgical plan for uh, including the approach? Um, so for, uh, obviously I'd want to see a CT scan to, to gauge where my landmarks are going to be, um, it, it, you've determined to do surgery, uh, CT scan shows a, uh, okay. A, a so fracture. if I had time, um, it looks like she said it was three <laughs> weeks ago. Um, if I had time, if I could print a stereolithic model, I, I would like to pre-bend a plate, um, before I go in, but if not, I would, I would bend it intraoperatively, um, for the procedure would be a general, uh, general anesthesia. Once the patient's prepped and draped, I place a scleral shield uh, in the right eye. I um, inject a little local anesthesia with vasoconstrictor in the conjunctiva. Um, I do a transconjunctival approach um, for most of these orbits. So um, a retroceptal transconjunctival approach. So uh, I make my incision at the, <clears throat> um, in the fornix, um, and go just, I stop immediately about two millimeters short of the puncta um, down through conjunctiva uh, fat down to the uh, um, orbital septum or retroceptum. So down to the periosteum. And then I lift with freer elevators sequentially along the orbital floor and along the medial orbit uh, to free the contents. Um, are there any important structures you're looking for in the orbital cone? Um, so, yeah, on the medial aspect, there's the um, anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries, which are 24 um, and 36 millimeters um, posteriorly. Um, and then the um, optic canal is normally 42 millimeters um, from the orbital rim. So, um, I understand. So uh, let's say you managed to get a plate in, uh, you close just fine. Um, what is, what is your, uh, what are your post-op checks, uh, looking for? Um, so I want to check her extra movements. I do a forced suction test before I close, but then as soon as she's awake, um, I want to get a full ophthalmological, 
ophthalmological exam, um, including acuities and, and movements. Um, <clears throat> I would check the uh, globe pressure at that point as well. And then I get a post-op CT to, to check my plate position and ensure there's no impingement um, that I can see. And uh, <laughs> I typically keep these patients overnight. Um, so um, uh, I would check her probably Q6 um, and then in the morning before she goes home. At what point, at what point physiologically would you repair um, or reoperate on a patient who has um, an ophthalmist? Um, so ideally, um, you would do it uh, within two to four weeks from the injury. Um, you want to wait for the edema to resolve so you can see where the position of the eye is, um, or, um, but you don't want to wait too long. Um, to allow for fibrosis. Sure. How do you how do you assess an ophthalmist? Um, there's a Hertel and an ophthalmist. Oh, you got it. <laughs> That's all I got for the case. That was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> I like that one. That was a full 12 minutes already. Yeah, that was good. I, went quick. I was not expecting a trauma, to be honest. So <laughs> it kind of threw me off. <laughs> I know. It, it, it's pretty good. You dealt with a couple big ones there. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> this isn't this isn't one of our cases. Uh, I I actually don't know where this case come from came from. So if you know, please let me know because I'd like to seen that picture that. somewhere. I don't remember where I, I saw I've it. seen it. It got passed around. It got passed around. Uh, I think this guy lived. Um, anyway, you you did the right thing making sure ATLS was performed, um, physical exam. It's almost guaranteed. Like you, you had that, you, you spat it out. Well, um, what else did we have? The teardrop thing. Um, I think yeah, it's like is gravity it? dependent, uh, due to the, like, is it low being depressurized It like sinks. And so the pupil looks like fatter on the bottom kind of like a Hershey's kiss kind of situation. Yeah. So it's from I, a I ruptured globe. I thought the apex yeah. of the teardrop went okay. like, towards the side of the perforation. Yeah. points towards That's, the in, yeah. uh, injury. Oh, there you go. So not gravity. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. I, teardrop I, I, points towards the, uh, like the, the injury. Um, sometimes it's like, a, a, like, um, either towards like the, uh, corneal perforation or okay. usually, uh, like a ruptured globe, you'll get a teardrop um, or some sort of open globe injury. Yeah. Um, and then with the white-eyed uh, blowout fracture, um, the reason why it's called white-eyed is because you get like basically minimal to no soft tissue trauma. So, you know, you, you don't have any like subconscious heme or anything like that or any chemosis. Oftentimes on the CT scan, it's a very discreet fracture yeah. as well. Um, which causes oftentimes will cause the entrapment. And so that's why you're getting uh, globe restriction. Yeah. I, uh, I, for some reason, <laughs> I'm glad I got the right words out. Cause I was thinking anisocoria, but that isn't the right word for a teardrop uh, pupil. Anisocoria happens when pupils are different sizes. Yeah. Different size pupils. Yeah. How, do, how does it happen though? Is it, a, it's an, if it's a um no afferent it's a relative afferent pupillary defect typically <laughs> aj would know this one man how do you yeah. is uh, that the marcus yeah. gun pupil yeah so it's an afferent so the input is not adequately received is that correct yeah it's just lack of input to the globe to the eye mm -hmm. input to the Pupillary sphincter. Sphincter. Yeah, the cilia <laughs> muscles. Sphincter. I know we don't like to talk about sphincters, guys. It's not a thing. But <laughs> once in a while, we might have to talk about it. The nurses always made us do that test in the ICU. They make you do that? No. They always say, well, we need a doctor to do the, the, the rectal tone exam. I'm like, are you shitting me? I think that was just you, right? Yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Pan, pan facial fracture, but we really need a DRE. <laughs> Ryan, you're up. <laughs> Hated it. Okay. Anyway, 
We went through right. the exam. Uh, yeah, uh, appropriate options by ophthalmology, uh, evisceration, enucleation, exenteration, uh, corresponding with removing the globe, but leaving the... Uh, no, enucleation is removing the globe, leaving the musculature. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I gotta sharpen my swords for the oral boards. I learned them from Mattel, and he's the Lord. And I'm his protege. You know I'm gonna slay all these motherfucking questions today. Cause I got the sound bite. They're gonna make these old men go, ooh, ah, like some afternoon delight. Yo, I got these questions in my sight, and I got the answers. Yo, my answers is so ill, they give you cake. Cause so, 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 so. Thanks for tuning in to Oral Surgery Fight Club. For uncut episodes and sound bites, go to osfightclub.com.